हेलो एवरीवन कंटिन्यूइंग विद द चैप्टर एपिडेमियोलॉजी एजेंट इट एज आई गेव यू अर्लियर हिंट दैट दिस इज अवर लास्ट चैप्टर दैट वी आर गोइंग थ्रू एंड प्रोबेबली द लास्ट लेक्चर व्हिच विल फिनिश अप दिस चैप्टर एजेंट इट under the subject health education isn't it we have already started with the disinfection part isn't it and in this last lecture disinfection procedures are important isn't it now we have discussed so many times isn't it in communicable diseases also that whatever the discharges of patients are there secretions of the patient are there those must be thoroughly disinfected in sanitary manner again i repeat that discharges of patient secretions of patient like urine sputum sample stool sample isn't it then whatever the fomites are there whatever articles are used isn't it by the patient all these are thoroughly disinfected now in previous lecture we have seen that the disinfection there are different types and there are different methods these agents may be physical agents these may be chemical agents isn't it so chemical substances or physical whatever the uh, methods are there they are useful for making those articles uh, free from whatever the harmful pathogenic microorganisms are there isn't it so we know now about the disinfection isn't it to make it infection free for that various agents are used isn't it and now in this lecture we will see that how the procedure is followed isn't it for all these articles now very first we will see that uh, disinfection of sputum isn't it now sputum many a times you know we have discussed that this whatever the sample is there isn't it it is accumulated in the patient suffering from respiratory tract infection and in that also uh, tuberculosis isn't it so where whatever the large amount of secretions are accumulated and that is sputum isn't it now this sputum also it is highly infectious and it is to be made infection free isn't it now here sputum can be disinfected on large scale also and on small scale also isn't it now on small scale isn't it so now why large scale and small scale because it depends upon the quantity isn't it so when small quantity is there so on small scale sputum is collected in a paper container or handkerchief isn't it and it is burnt immediately isn't it but when the quantity of sputum is in large amount as in case of tb patient so it is collected either in disposable paper cup or sputum cup which is already half filled with cresol or any other disinfectant agent isn't it then the patient should spit in this cup and when it is full it must be allowed to stand for 2 hours so for 2 hours it must come in contact with the disinfectant isn't it this sputum uh, sample isn't it and in during this 2 hours so whatever these germs are there they are totally destroyed alternatively autoclave also can be used it is a best method isn't it now this uh, autoclaving for 20 minutes at 20 pounds pressure isn't it can be done and after autoclaving then this is disposed of in a sanitary manner alternatively isn't it 
a large amount of sputum can be disinfected by uh, boiling also isn't it okay so boiling also can be method useful for uh, proper disinfection of sputum and again burning is also a method which can be used isn't it so whatever the chemical agent is there like uh, phenol so that is added in bucket and then it can be dumped isn't it or it can be disposed of in a sanitary manner now this was about the disinfection of sputum next is feces and urine isn't it so the patient who is already suffering from communicable diseases or infections so whatever the discharges are there the feces or urine they are also highly infectious and they must also be disposed of in sanitary manner isn't it and for that the disinfection of the sample is very important now feces and urine they are also collected in a particular container isn't it in which the equal quantity of either bleaching powder is added or formalin is added any one uh, disinfectant can be added okay maybe phenol or alcohol isn't it and that is kept as such isn't it for at least 2 hours so this is contact period isn't it during this 2 hours whatever the infectivity is there of the sample of the discharge that will get totally destroyed isn't it after disinfection the container is emptied in drain isn't it now alternatively a boiling water also can be added in the container isn't it and then it can be disposed of in sanitary manner similarly the disinfection of instruments is also very important isn't it now whatever the glass instruments are there like syringes needles isn't it okay they are disinfected by boiling in water for 20 to 30 minutes isn't it the articles which are not suitable by boiling isn't it so they can be subjected to ionizing radiations isn't it boiling does not kill spores so surgical instruments cannot be sterilized by boiling isn't it as we have discussed earlier that the surgical items they are easily and effectively uh, sterilized by ionizing radiations isn't it or alternatively autoclave also can be used now on the same time there are some uh, sophisticated instruments also or uh, some rubber articles may be there isn't it they can be disinfected by ionizing radiations then the linen is there now the bed sheets or whatever other uh, clothings which are used by the patient isn't it so they are also def, uh, strictly disinfected by boiling method isn't it so boiling in water for half hour or one hour it is sufficient and if soap is added in water so the disinfectant action will get increased isn't it now if whatever the bed sheets are there or linen are there if they are spoiled or rather we can say soiled with the discharge of the patient may be excreta or if wounds are there to the patient so pus or any blood isn't it or urine isn't it so these kinds of whatever the linen and uh, bed sheets are there they are first soaked in uh, 10% formalin or phenol solution isn't it so that whatever the uh, chemical agent is there that will totally destroy whatever the pathogenic microorganisms are there 
and then they are boiled in soap and water for about two hours, isn't it? Then, if woolen articles are there, or leather goods are there, isn't it? Or many times furniture is there, isn't it? So these articles cannot be disinfected by boiling or autoclaving, isn't it? Then such articles should be disinfected by ionizing radiations, isn't it? So this disinfection procedure is very important and uh, each and every uh, sample you can say or uh, instruments or articles how they are to be sterilized or disinfected that we must know carefully. Now, next is the disinfection procedure of room, isn't it? Now, this may be hospital room and regarding operation theatre also we will discuss. So, room, isn't it, or operation theatre we will talk about the hospitals how they follow uh, disinfection procedure isn't it so formaldehyde fumigation is preferred commonly isn't it for operation theater isn't it now for that whatever the formalin is there isn't it or formaldehyde we can say isn't it so it, that is prepared isn't it 500 ml formalin is there, isn't it? Then that is mixed in 1 liter water, isn't it? Okay, and then the solution is boiled, isn't it? And as they are boiled, the fumes are generated, isn't it? So, regarding operation theater, if we talk, isn't it? So, chemical disinfection is very important, isn't it? And this operation theatre is fumigated by the solution that is prepared, as I said, and it is displayed in slide, isn't it? So, this solution is heated, and as they are heated, boiled, the fumes are generated, isn't it? And that is called fumigation, isn't it? So, fumigation is done with the help of this solution that is prepared isn't it and uh, after fumigation the room after treatment isn't it it is kept closed for 12 hours so that we must get the effect of those whatever the fumes are there isn't it and after 12 hours that operation theater can be used isn't it now disinfection of room isn't it how it is done that also we will see okay whatever the uh, walls are there of hospital rooms and operation theatres they must be preferably painted with washable paints isn't it then floors must be made up of chips or marble which can be easily cleaned by washing with water isn't it by free flow of water isn't it then the rooms which are generally well ventilated and where direct sunlight enters isn't it so their natural disinfection is taking place isn't it but still the floors and walls are mopped with soap or any other detergent and washed with free flow of water isn't it and after washing nobody must enter in the room for at least next two days now chemical disinfection also can be done isn't it by using various whatever the chemicals that we have discussed it may be cresol or phenol or formalin isn't it? or a solution of bleaching powder isn't it so the floors and walls are mopped with any of the above mentioned whatever the disinfectants are there isn't it and this contact must be of chemicals and floors and uh, whatever the walls are there for near about 4 to 6 hours, isn't it? And then 
subsequently they are washed with free flow of water isn't it now here uh, the procedure is also important as it is displayed in your screen isn't it so all doors and windows isn't it must be closed isn't it the fans and ac must be switched off then as i said fumigation is done isn't it by heating or boiling the formalin solution so that fumes will get generated then the 12 hours time period must be there so that whatever the entry is there in operation theater that must be restricted for 12 hours isn't it and on next day the 300 ml of ammonia that can be used now why this ammonia solution is used isn't it to neutralize formalin wafers isn't it and then this operation theater can be used for uh, carrying out the surgery isn't it so at least once a week the fumigation of operation theater can be carried out isn't it so that was about the disinfection of rooms so this is how you can see in this slide how fumigation is carried out isn't it of uh, operation theater also can be carried out and whatever the general rooms are there isn't it wherever the either minor operations are carried out isn't it so fumigation is done isn't it now in disinfection procedure the last one is disinfection of dead bodies isn't it so the disposal we can say of dead body we know there are different methods isn't it and so many systems are adopted isn't it and different methods different systems are adopted by different uh, communities isn't it so we will discuss this just for your knowledge also but uh, you must know you refer textbook also in that detail we need not go isn't it so uh, whatever the disposal of dead bodies there that is also very important keeping in mind the present situation also as we are going through the covid 19 pandemic isn't it so the persons who are actually dying due to corona virus so their body may not act as a source of spread their body may not spread infection to other their family members or any other person isn't it and that is also uh, one of the factor but generally whatever the systems that are followed they are the systems of disposal isn't it and on your slide you will see that there are different methods which are uh, followed isn't it in textbook you will find that three systems are given one is burning other is burying and floating now burning we know that in our hinduism the burning method is followed so incineration is nothing but burning other is burying or burial so many uh, communities they follow burying method isn't it so specially christians and uh, muslims they follow method of burial and the third important method is floating isn't it now floating method also is followed isn't it how it is done so whatever the uh, dead body is there that is floated in a nearby river stream or sea isn't it and why it is floated because the water animals can 
eat those whatever the uh, dead body is there, isn't it? It is a easy method, but it is not a uh, proper method, isn't it? Because the water gets polluted, contaminated, and it creates unhygienic conditions, isn't it? And that water becomes unfit for human consumption also. So these three methods are given in your textbook. But overall, in whole world, if we see, so what, which methods they follow? One is incineration, that is burning, then burial, burning, water submersion, that is floating, then cannibalism, body donation. So nowadays, you will see that many people, they donate uh, their body to uh, various uh, memorable hospitals and other big hospitals where the research work is carried out, isn't it? Then body world display. So in most of the displays, museums, body is kept, isn't it? Then uh, left to be eaten away by vultures, aerial burial, isn't it? Hydrolysis, dissolution, freezing with liquid nitrogen, isn't it? These are some of the important methods which are followed, isn't it? But three main as I have given you idea that is burning, burning and floating. So just in short, I will let you know about these methods also. Now, in Christianity, isn't it? Just these slides will uh, help you to understand, isn't it? The different methods of dispo, uh, disinfection, we can say, of dead body, isn't it? So proper disposal is by disinfecting by these methods that we have discussed, isn't it? So in Christianity and Muslims, we have seen that the method that is followed is of burying, isn't it? So the bodies, dead bodies are buried under deep earth, isn't it? In deep earth, in Hinduism, as I said, burning is the method which is followed isn't it so by burning the body of diseased person will kill or destroy all pathogenic microorganisms so while carrying this dead body also it must be covered with clean cloth soaked in disinfectant so as to prevent chances of infection pouring out of the body isn't it? so this burning method in our Hinduism it is very common and nowadays in metropolitan cities like uh, uh, Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta, Pune isn't it the dead bodies are disposed of by burning the body in high current of heat provided by electric furnace isn't it so electric uh, uh, furnace is there where the body is subjected to high uh, voltage current where the body will get reduced to ash within 30 minutes, isn't it? So after burning also, the remains are spread out in rivers. So in our Hinduism, whatever the remains are there, isn't it? Jinkong Asthiya Bolte, isn't it? So they are carried away, isn't it? To the sacred places, isn't it? And there they are subjected to floating in the river. That is water disposal. Then, as I said, that the bodies are kept, isn't it? somewhere isn't it so Parsis 
hasn't it in india they are very less in percentage and they are known as zoroastrians hasn't it so they regard sky burial in which the bodies are exposed to natural elements including vultures who can eat these open topped hasn't it bodies so with this we finish up the disinfection procedures where we have discussed that how the discharges secretions of the patient like feces urine sputum how they can be disposed of hasn't disinfected so before disposal disinfection is very important and we have discussed this disinfection procedure isn't then how room and operation theater can be disinfected the various instruments and then finally disinfection of dead bodies so i hope that you are uh, you have found my online lectures beneficial isn't it and with this we finish up this last chapter of epidemiology in subject health education and community pharmacy and i declare that our subject health education and community pharmacy all nine chapters are over but still i am committed to you that if any problem you have regarding any chapter regarding any topic isn't it so you can share your difficulty with me isn't it and i will suggest you all that continue your studies whatever these online videos are there you listen this once twice thrice isn't it and try to keep your notes completed isn't it this will be beneficial for you not only for your examinations but for from knowledge point of view also uh, you will be in benefit isn't it because simply appearing for examination and getting pass is not sufficient what knowledge you acquire that is more important isn't it thank you